Hi, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. I have a YouTube channel where I do weekly videos dedicated to helping you get the most fun and enjoyment out of your Kamado Joe. After this video, if I'm a new face, you haven't seen me before, really appreciate you coming to check out my page. But for today, it's all about the I command. You haven't heard of the I command? It's Kamado Joe's temperature control system. It just makes it hassle-free. And today is a perfect cook to demonstrate the utility of the iCommand unit. I have a lot on the go. We have a lot of distractions around the house and I'm not able to pay much attention to my barbecue. In fact, why don't I go and introduce you to said distraction? One second. All right, this is my distraction. Meet Bella. She's an eight week old Portuguese water dog and she's gonna be my grill buddy. But for the time being, she's keeping us on our toes, running around the house, chewing things, working on training. So I am not able to pay attention for a low slow cook. And since we've had her for the past week, I haven't cooked anything low and slow. And this is where I think the I command really shines. We all have life get in the way, whether it's running errands, doing some chores, stuff around the house, kids or grill buddies. Uh, there's always something that can distract us. And that's the type of thing where if you're not paying attention, you can overcook your food, undercook your food, the temperature could run away, get a little hot, get a little too low. And I command is gonna keep us sorted for the day. So let me go ahead and put the distraction back inside um, and I'll start walking you through how we're going to set up for today's cook. Okay, so now that you've met Grill Buddy, let me take you back in time earlier this morning when we prepped our pork picnic. And so you could do this leaving the skin on and doing some deep scars so the seasoning can get down in, or you can go ahead and remove the skin, which is exactly what I did today. So the first step is just to pat that dry with some paper towel and get a boning knife or a sharp chef's knife that you can maneuver around the nooks and cranny of your pork and just go ahead and trim that up. Now you don't need to remove all the silver skin and all the fat. Some of that will render out. I just want to reduce the amount of drippings that we have to clean up or deal with later on. And I want the seasoning to have a chance to adhere to the meat. And if I put it all on the fat and the fat melts, it'll just run off taking our seasoning with it. Now, if I had uh, prepped this cook ahead of time, I love salt brining things like um, pork shoulders, but since I didn't do that today, we're just gonna throw it on, go hot and fast, and have it ready for dinner tonight. I'm using a pre-bought rub, so today I'm using Hardcore Carnivore Black. It has a lot of great salt content that you wouldn't want to use if you had dry brine, because you salt it with the dry brine and then salt it again with the rub. But for an all-in-one, it's gonna give us a great bark. Okay, so for our first chapter, I'm gonna show you how to get your Kamado Joe ready to start working with the I command. It was pretty simple and you can do it yourself. And I have a time-saving hack that uh, makes it possible to do this without some extra helping hands. And so the first thing that you wanna go ahead and do is remove your uh, cooking grids, divide and conquer, rack, etc. And you're actually going to end up removing one or two of the uh, firebox pedestals so you have access to the bolts that are connected to the screws right near our bottom draft door. So just using a wrench and a screwdriver you're able to remove those in about two minutes time and then slide out your stock draft door so that we can now install the one that is included from Kamado Joe. Now there's a couple ways that you can uh, install this. I read online a tip to go ahead and install the stock door in behind that. So that's what I've done today. Uh, this again, new to me, I'm experimenting with how I like to have it work with the iCommand installed as well as without it installed. But this looks like it'll allow me to have full control temperatures using the iCommand as well as normal operation when I want to go at it manually and cook myself and rely on my ability to uh, control the temperature uh, throughout the day. So then uh, what we'll do is we'll pop in the I command into the new uh, insert and reassemble uh, those screws and our firebox. Uh, I, I'll show you also how to use the toilet paper trick in order to prop the firebox 
up away from the edges and make it really easy to install that ring back on. Once we've got our grill all back together, we wanna to go ahead and build our fire. Now I'm a big believer when experimenting with something new like I'm doing today to try and change only one thing. And the one thing I'm gonna to change today is outsourcing temperature control. I'm not gonna do that. The I command is gonna take care of that for me. It also has a feature to help stoke the fire and bring our grill up to temperature. But since I've already got this skill nailed and I wanna be able to tell the family at least I did something to help cook dinner, I'm gonna go ahead and do that myself. So I'm just gonna throw in some charcoal, add a Kamado Joe fire starter cube, light that up, let the grill temperature come up, uh, and I was originally thinking around 270 degrees. I've since decided to go a little bit hotter and a little bit faster because we are at the halfway point in the day and the plan is to have this for dinner. So instead of 270, I'll be cooking at 350 degrees. In either case, what I like to do at this stage is let the grill come up to temperature without the top rack installed, without the top of the slow roller. Once the grill comes up to temperature, then I go ahead and install the top of the slow roller, uh, our cooking grids, uh, and then today's setup, what I did is I used the X accessory ring and just threw my drip tray in underneath that, which is holding it off the top of the slow roller and below our food. And the reason I wanna do that is not only will it catch the drippings as it should, help keep our slow roller looking nice and new as it is. This is only a one week old grill and I haven't used the slow roller on it yet, but it'll also help stop that fat from uh, being superheated and burning and turning into white billowy smoke. And so by having some separation from the heat and the slow roller, uh, it'll prevent that from happening. So this only smoke that we're gonna get is that great charcoal and peach smoking wood that we added to the bottom of our charcoal basket. So now that we are up to temperature, let's go ahead and turn on our I command. The first uh, part of the setup process is to hold the power button on the side for about eight seconds or so until you see it blink rapidly. Then using your smartphone, just connect to the local Wi-Fi signal that the I command is putting out, download the app, and it'll guide you through the process of how to connect uh, connect the I command to your home Wi-Fi, uh, and then once that's all ready to go, how to initiate your cook. So I went and selected pork already, increased our temperature to the 350 degrees that we want. I let it know it's about an eight pound uh, pork picnic shoulder that we're cooking today, and hit go. And so uh, the fan ran for very uh, you know few seconds in the background just to help bring me back up to that 350 degrees and we are now holding a nice flat line. Now, one of the things that is really, really important when you're using the I command is that you reduce your top vent setting by about a full notch from what you would do if you were trying to achieve this temperature naturally. I've mentioned before on my channel, uh, when you're learning how to control your grill, think of the bottom vent as your gas pedal and the top vent uh, as your brake pedal. And so, you know, the, the gas is going to be taken care of by the I command itself, which is going to make sure that we have air. But since that could provide too much air, we could have runaway temperature. So we want to go ahead and tighten up our top vent much more aggressively than what we would do if we were cooking manually. And that way, the I command uh, will be able to regulate temperatures itself versus providing some air. It's too much air, and now our temperature you know, sort of never settles back in where we want it. So right now, I'm sitting at about 25, 30% open out of the first notch. If I was doing this uh, you know, manually, aiming for 350 degrees, I'd be in the middle of the second and third notch on my top bed. So just think about reducing one full notch distance from the temperature that you're trying to hold.
So now that we've got our iCommand all set up and operational, our Joe's up to temperature, let's go ahead and get our pork picnic on. And so pretty simple, we're just gonna go ahead and bring that out now that the seasoning has had time to adhere to the meat. It's about 45 minutes or so while I was doing other things in the background as well as setting up the iCommand itself. And that just gives some time for the seasoning to bond to our pork. So we'll just go ahead and open up our Kamado Joe, place that in the center over the drip pan. And I wanna have a little bit of space between the probe pit um, itself, so, or sorry, the pit probe, so that the meat isn't artificially cooling the temperature of the ambient air uh, that our eye command is using to control whether or not the fan is engaged. And then we'll go and insert the uh, meat probe. Today I used uh, position number one. Um, you just have to tell the eye command which, uh, which probe you want to track. And today I'm only going to be using, uh, you know, one probe in position number one. You can set any one that you like. And so uh, when inserting the probe, just make sure that you're not resting against bone as that will give us an artificial reading on our pulled pork. So I'm going to let this go now for about uh, four hours. I might check on it in an hour to two hours to see if we need to add any spray. And that should be more than enough time to develop an amazing bark at these temperatures. And then based on how quickly our internal temperature is coming up to that pulled pork range, anywhere from 195, maybe up to 203, 207 degrees, when it probes just like butter, we'll figure out if we need to go ahead and wrap this or not. Anyways, I'm gonna go take care of the puppy and I'll see you in about four hours when we're ready to continue this cook. All right, we are back and it's around five o'clock. We're getting close to dinner and this little handful has continued to be like this all afternoon, just full of energy. So she actually had her first um, nail trim and bath today with the groomer. And so the I Command has been worth its weight in gold here, taking care of our cook. But I'm gonna wanna go ahead and speed things up now. So we're gonna get ready to wrap. I'm gonna put my grill buddy back inside and give you a quick update also on a key learning. So be right back. Okay, back. So as I mentioned, already sold on the use case of the I Command. It kept our grill running perfectly while we were away dealing with a bunch of other things and I didn't have to pay attention to the grill all afternoon. Now that being said, when I was looking at our temperature charts, I definitely saw some fluctuation. And so I did a quick little read up on this and I wanna pass this tip along. And so much like you hear about Tesla's getting over the air updates, the iCommand does the exact same thing. And so when I checked my firmware version by hitting the little Kamado, uh, Joe logo on the top uh, right hand side of my iOS app. It let me know that I was version 1.03 something versus version 1.05, uh, which is the latest version. I'll make sure I, I actually write it out in the description down below uh, so you can cross reference that to make sure you have the newest one. And uh, immediately I see the difference where instead of fluctuating, you know, 10 or so degrees up and down, we're pretty much drawing a line with a ruler and I'm even more impressed than I already was. So our internal temperature right when we wrapped this was around 165 degrees. Now, normally I find we can gain anywhere from about 20 to 30 degrees an hour with foil. So I'm gonna check this in an hour just to confirm that's about the pace that we're on. Hopefully that's bringing us up into the high 180s, maybe the mid 190s if we're lucky and we'll figure out if we need any extra time or if by cranking our heat to 400 degrees, which is even hotter uh, than we're cooking at right now at 350, if that's enough to actually get this a spot where we could afford to take it off, give it a rest before we start to pull into it. Let's go ahead and crank up our I command to 400 degrees and see if we're done, ready for some dinner in about an hour. All right, it's been about 50 minutes or so and Curiosity got the best of me. So go ahead and check the temperature using a, a meat probe that we can move around. And so um, much to my delight, we've made great progress in nearly the last hours. So we've gone from an internal temperature 
of 165 degrees to probing anywhere I saw on the low side, uh, you know, high to mid 180s uh, to the highest 206, 207. Now, if this felt great everywhere, or at least in most areas that I was probing, we'd go ahead and pull this off and let it rest. But we had a bit of a mixed bag. Some parts, even the more well done in the 203 to 207, just had a little bit more resistance than what I'm looking for. And so to try and describe this, imagine if you took your probe and you were to put it in a jar of peanut butter. That's about the level of resistance that we want. If we go too far, you can overcook your pulled pork to the point where it'll just be sort of a mushy consistency, uh, but you can also underdo it to the point where you chew it, it might feel a little dry or um, you know have some, some larger chunks that don't wanna break down and shred really nicely. And so at this point, uh, I'm not looking for a temperature to tell me that our pulled pork is ready. We're just gonna go for feel but we are really, really close. I'm thinking maybe five, 10 more minutes, and we'll be able to pull this off, let it rest for a little bit, and then get ready to shred it up and make up our sandwiches. Okay, so it's been another 10 minutes, and that was all the extra magic that we needed to go from feeling pretty good to feeling pretty awesome. So it is time now to pull this off. And because it's getting dark, we're close to dinner, I'm not gonna rest this as long as I would, but definitely going to prioritize at least sort of about a 20 minute rest. So that way we can just help reabsorb some of the moisture that we've been pushing out. Then we'll go ahead and shred this up and get it on a plate so we can dig into it. So I'll move the camera a little bit closer just while we remove this and I'll rejoin you after that 20 minute rest period is up. We could do it with a little taste test and a recap of our first cook using the Kamado Joe eye command. All right, about six and a half hours after we first started cooking, this cook is in the books and I am thrilled that we had so little to do on a very, very busy day. And so the eye command just delivered in spades here at the set it and forget it. And that's even with the user error of forgetting to check if the firmware was up to date and taking advantage of all the iterations and enhancements that Komodo Joe has made behind the scenes in terms of updating the fan control. Once I did that update, we went from ranging you know, 10 degrees to almost a flat line. Looks like we drew it with a ruler really really impressed even more impressed than I was when this cook got started and I was able just to walk away and uh, and deal with everything that we had going on today so without further ado let's jump in and give this a taste test don't know if that's coming through on cameras we're losing our light but we have great smoke ring and just outstanding bark let's go ahead and give this a proper bite man I know I say this about almost everything I cook on the Komodo Joe, but pulled pork is one of my favorite. The way the smoke, the fat renders, that bark sets, just incredible. And the fact that all we really did is throw it on and not pay any attention to it all day, I'm even more impressed. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed hanging out today. If you want to see some upcoming cooks and ideas I have planned for the iCommand, be sure to check out my channel at Smoking Dad Barbecue, and I'll be sure to uh, look forward to seeing you there when we get to put the iCommand back in action. Anyways, thanks for hanging out with us today on the Kamado Joe channel. Until then, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, signing off.